Hey everyone and welcome to the Learning Ladder. Today I'm sharing with you my curriculum picks for the 2021-2022 homeschool year. My daughter is eight and will be going into fourth grade. So I'll start with maths. So for maths we are doing Saxon uh, Math 5-4. This is the textbook. Um, you have got the solutions manual, all the answers in, and then we have our tests and worksheets book. I'm also adding a couple of little extra Osborne books to it. This is the Multiplying Dividing Activity book. I really like these. This is Fractions and Decimals and our Times Tables activity book. And what we tend to do is use these on Fridays. Let's look at this for maths this year. How to be good at maths, the simplest ever visual guide. This goes from age 7 to 11, so we can continually use it for the next several years. And it's got different topics of numbers, calculating, measurements, geometry, statistics, and algebra. And it just looks fantastic. So it's a, a great reference resource when you're doing different um, math activities. For language arts, we are doing Beowulf Grammar and Beowulf Language Arts. So I've done a flip through of this uh, curriculum before, so I'll link that below so you can check it out. But it comes with a lot of books, so I'll just show you some of them now. Okay, so English from the Roots Up, so this is for your Greek and Latin. These are some of the grammar books she requests or recommends. Skin Like Milk, Hair of Silk, Similes and Metaphors, Eat Shoots and Leaves About Punctuation, Adjectives and Adverbs with Squirrels, <laughs> um, My Dog is as Smelly as Dirty Socks, Girls Like Spaghetti, again about punctuation, more particularly about apostrophes. Um, again, this one is about commas, Eat Shoots and Leaves, Dealing in, in Sicily, What is an Adverb? book about nouns, a book about verbs, kite scale, scale, sail high, <laughs> up, up and away, book about adverbs, look at my book, actually this should be in the writing section, how kids can write and illustrate terrific books, 20 odd ducks, why every punctuation mark counts, greedy apostrophe, a cautionary tale, and many luscious lollipops, a book about adjectives. She also requests or recommends two poetry books. I picked a child's introduction to poetry. Um, this one is gorgeous. Beautifully illustrated. And then where the sidewalk ends. And this one is really, really funny. I oh, know my daughter's going to really like this one. There are also three games that she recommends. The Story Maker. Um, this is Create Silly Sentences and Stories with Magnetic Tiles. So that's part of your writing. How to, how to Tell a Story, again, is part of your writing. It's got all these story cubes in. And then Hangman Game is to practice for spelling. Okay, and for writing, she uses Don't Forget to Write for the elementary grade. So she schedules in several different uh, writing prompts or activities from this book in the uh, curriculum guides. But she also says which I really like, that you can pick different ones or choose your own, which I really like because I like to tailor the curriculum. Um, so that's the spine for writing. The other books are Look at My Book, How Kids Can Write and Illustrate Terrific Books. Like a fun one. The Q&A, A Day for Kids. So it's three years, 365 questions. So we'll put this in our bedtime basket and it'll be a th fun thing to look back on. The Time Capsule, a seriously awesome journal, so this will be for my daughter, and this is scheduled in for her to do, as many pages as she'd like at a time. The Best of Mad Libs, 50 Years of Mad Libs, my daughter loves Mad Libs, so she's going to be really thrilled with that one. This is for them to keep track of their reading, so this is the Bookworm Journal, um, so you read the book, complete it, and then tear off the little corner to feed to the worm. This is for writing. This is Let's Draw a Story, Illustration School. How to draw cute stuff. Draw anything and everything in the cutest style ever. This is just going to be fantastic. She's absolutely going to love this curriculum so much. These are for writing uh, activities. I are for opinion essays. I want a dog or I want a cat. You only had to pick one, but because we have dogs and cat, couldn't just get one and not the other, so my daughter can choose which one she wants to do. Again, these are for language arts, uh, writing um, assignments. This is Squids Will Be Squids. This is uh, Fresh Morals and Beastly Fables. This one is for another writing assignment, The Other Side of the Story, Fairy Tales with a Twist. Uh, the True Story of the Three Little Pigs by the Wolf. So I think this one is actually for a perspective writing, so I'm really looking forward to that one. The Stinky Cheese, Man and the Fairly Stupid Tales. 
in another writing assignment and this is for another writing assignment mr william shakespeare's plays seven plays in here now these are not part of the curriculum but i've added them in so creative writing with charlie the bfg and matilda so this one is for tremendous characters so how to write tremendous characters this one is for spell binding speech to help them with dialogue and then this one is for splendid settings I think those will be really fun. Those are not part of the curriculum, it's just something I've added in. I'm also adding in vocabulary cartoons. Kids learn a word a minute and never forget it. I'll put this in our either morning or bedtime basket. And I'm also adding in the storytellers word a day from Mrs. Wordsmith. This is a sort of a calendar style. And so every day it's a different word. It tells you what part of um, speech it is and what it means, obviously. And then on the back, there is additional information. On the back there is additional information, so tell a story, it gives you a little prompt, tells you how often it's used, synonyms for it, um, word pairs for each of the different vocabulary words in here. And I'm also adding in the Storyteller's Illustrated Dictionary, so a thousand plus words to take your storytelling to the next level. My daughter loves writing stories, so I think she'll really enjoy and get a lot out of this one additional resources this year the illustrated english thesaurus so this is the next level up to the one we had and then the osborne guide to better english grammar spelling and punctuation i thought this would always be helpful this we can look through this for years as a reference if there's any part of our grammar that we're unsure of we can have a look in here and then for extra writing that i wanted to add in we have got the write your own sci-fi and fantasy stories their little journal. We absolutely adore these uh, little journals that they have. Such an amazing activity. My daughter just has so much fun with them. They have so many different styles and categories and everything. So I love these Elsborn uh, books so much. And our big writing um, activity that will span the whole year is actually to make a well, it's cross-curricular with science, and that's to make a science magazine as part of our science curriculum, which I'll talk about as we get to science but I got her the Osborne Write and Design Your Own magazine so she can go through this and it'll help her with uh, designing the actual uh, magazine and the different pieces that she's going to be uh, creating throughout the year but they will all come from our science curriculum which I'll show you in a minute but yeah that's the Write and Design Your Own magazine. For handwriting I am using Handwriting Without Tears for Cursive Success as we've used this from preschool um, and we love this series. I do like to offer a few different options though for um, handwriting uh, so you, you will have seen that there was something in the Beowulf language arts as well that we can use for handwriting practice um, and drawing and things but I did also get her the Aesop for children story and copy workbook so this is for her to practice now it is in print but she can either choose to write in print or cursive in this one i do also have her a cursive one on the way it's just not arrived yet and that is the classic stories um one sorry that's my cat <laughs> that's the classic stories one i'll leave the link below for it but what i really liked about this particular one is you've got the fable usually it's illustrated and then you've got your copy work section so that's why i particularly went for this one now this is actually for me but if my daughter wants to join in she can do she says i need to improve my cursive so i thought it'd be fun a fun activity for us to do together so i got the alice adventures in wonderland one um and i thought we i'll do with my cursive when she's doing hers but if she wants to join in she can do as well and then finally for handwriting i also got the adventures in lettering again just a different way to practice it's got some great prompts in here that you can do um, you can actually write in the book or photocopy it and I thought it's something that we can again do together um, and I think that would be lots of fun too. Okay so for spelling in Beowulf Language Arts she recommends so for spelling in Beowulf Language Arts she recommends the modern speller which I do like the look of um, and I think would be great it is actually free as well because it's in the public domain however I decided to go with IEW spelling uh, well, it's phonetic zoo spelling this year, and um, so this, is, uh, this has got A, B and C level in here, and basically all the cards are in and you just go at your own pace, um, but it will cover several years. So it's got all the cards at the back, um, you get to build your zoo, which is she's going to really love, and it's got all the spelling rules and everything in here. So I think this will be lots of fun, I'll let you know obviously once we've used it how we like it, but that's what we're doing for spelling, IOW phonetic zoo.
Okay, now onto reading this year. I've selected a few titles for her. Obviously, she can pick off the shelf and we can go to the library too. She also has reading in science and history, but I'll show you those those books in the specific part of the video. But the first one I picked was The Golden Compass. This is a graphic novel. Um, we've seen the movie and she really liked it, so I think she'll like this one. Histories, Mysteries, Curious Clues, Cold Cases and Puzzles from the Past. Again, I thought this would be a fantastic one for her. The Wind in the Willows, graphic novel. Children's Thrift Classics from Dover, The Adventures of Sammy J. This is from Thornton Burgess. These are illustrated as well. The Adventures of Poor Mrs. Quack, again from the same author. And these are illustrated too. And The Adventures of the Red Squirrel. I have got her two new science comics from the series. We, she adores these so much. Um, this is for the digestive system. And I have also got her the polar bears one. It's just not come yet in the post. But those are the two science comics for this year. For fiction, I got her the 10 books collection from, for the animal arc. So this is all to do with veterinary um, care, which is you'll see in, an, in my electives why this is relevant. But basically it's where they help out at the vet surgery. So there are 10 in this series and she can just obviously go through it at her pace. So we've got kittens, ponies, hamsters, foxes, bunnies. So it's a good range in here. Tales of Amazing Animal Heroes, Real Life Stories of Animal Bravery. Again, I thought she'd really enjoy this one. And it's beautifully illustrated. The Hound of the Baskervilles. This is a classic Sherlock Holmes. The Girl Who Helped Thunder and other Native American folk tales. She really likes folk tales, so I think she's going to enjoy this one. Ranger in Time. White Fang. Alice in Wonderland. We've read Alice in Wonderland together several times, but she loves it. And then The Wizard of Oz. Just go through those at her own pace. And then we do have, as I said, some additional books in history and science, but we'll get to those in a minute. Reading, I also use Harcourt Trophies. I love these particularly because it's so many different styles of um, writing. So you've got fiction, um, you've got historical fiction, biographies, uh, plays, folk tales, non-fiction. Um, so many different styles of writing and all these great books inside and they do have activities with them sometimes we do them sometimes we don't and um, it just depends and if, particularly if it's something really related to what we're doing then i'm more inclined to um do one of the activities but generally speaking we read the story from it and then there's usually some comprehension questions at the end and i'll ask her those verbally and then, like I say, if there's an activity in here that I think would be really helpful or is connected to something, so there's the think and respond section, something that connected to something that we're doing, then we'll do that. So, for example, this one is a science and oral report. So, you know, we, or write a postcard. So they have lots of activities and sometimes I choose them um, if I think it's relevant to what we're doing. It does also come with a language handbook, which has great tips in here for writing um different writing styles how to write paragraphs descriptive essays and it also has grammar uh, at the back and then it also has this practice book which goes along with the stories um, and this one is for the first story so it, this one is using vocabulary words reading the story this is a letter statement yes no this is a spelling one so occasionally we'll do some of, of the pages from here as well but mainly i use it for different types of reading and comprehension and then her cursive book finally arrived. So this is the classic children's literature. This is for um, cursive practice. Um, so these are all the different excerpts that they have for the different stories. And it's uh, basically got the excerpt on the side and then the cursive on the opposite side. So that's everything for language arts. Now, in terms of read alouds, we've got The Animals of Farthing Wood in the Grip of Winter. This is the second book in the series. We read the first one last year and um, it, for our IT, and we'll, we plan to do the same again. Um, this will be, you know, cross-curricular. So this is the second part when they actually arrive at the um, animal reserve and what happens to them. Uh, this is part of history, the Birchbark House. Another one for history, the Ice Monster. This one is illustrated as well, which is cool. 
um, The Wind in the Willows. So I plan to read this one first before I give her the um, graphic novel for it, but this is one of the children's classics and it is beautiful. It has got colour pictures in. You watch, I won't be able to find one now. There we go. <laughs> it's always away. That one's gorgeous. Working our way through the Chronicles of Narnia. So I've got the little set here of those. Watership Down by Richard Adams and Pippi Longstocking plus I'll pick up things throughout the year. We're still working on the what the Katie did collection and the Anne of Green Gables collection and then anything else that I pick up throughout the year I'll just add to it. Okay for history we are using my lesson plans for Journey Through Time. I'm going to be doing a video soon on this um, on these lesson plans and then I'll be putting them on Teachers Pay Teachers but basically we go through several periods of history using the Explore books as part of the spine. So we have the Stone, Bronze and Iron Ages, Ancient Egyptians, Ancient Greeks, the Romans, Tudors, Celts, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, and that wasn't in order, they were a bit messed up. <laughs> um, Victorians, World War One and World War II. And we also have several other books which I refer to as part of the spine too. Um, so it's a case of books, YouTube videos, websites and activities. That's the whole uh, lesson plan for each of the periods of history. And then for each period of history as well, uh, there is a notebook um, that your student, well, in this case my child, <laughs> uses. So this is the Ancient Egypt notebook and it's full of lots of different activities to go along with the particular time period so this one is for the Egyptians um, so basically the websites have things like art from that time period artifacts for them to to research and look at um, facts about that period of history lots of videos on YouTube to watch for that period of history and then activities uh, and recipes as well so lots of lots of fun so some of the spines that go along with it are the timelines of everything, what happened when in the world, the timelines of world history, DK Knowledge Encyclopedia for History, See Inside the History of Britain, Look Inside Living Long Ago, the Osborne World History Encyclopedia and the History of Britain, the Visual Guide. They're not all absolutely essential but for example the encyclopedia um, is used extensively the knowledge encyclopedia of history is the timeline books are um, and then the others are just you know added extra but you can obviously with as with any lesson plan or curriculum you can tailor the books to your preference but in the curriculum where books are listed that are part of the spine I've told you what page to reference to for a couple of the periods of history, I've also got the history pockets. They're not essential as part of the lesson plans. They, these are just something that, well, to be honest, I actually had these before I decided to do Journey Through Time. Um, but you definitely don't have to have them, but I like to have them because there's so many different little activities in here. So this is the ancient Greeks, ancient Egyptians, and the ancient Romans. Those are the three history pockets that I picked to go along with it. I'm also using a subscription box called, his, uh, called Mystery in Time. And in that subscription box, there is a book that goes along with that particular time period. So the children are traveling through time and obviously um, get to experience different events pertaining to that particular time period. There is a, usually a game or a craft. So I'm using that as a supplement to the curriculum as an you know, added extra. Again, you don't have to have it to, to um, do the curriculum, the lesson plans. And I actually haven't mentioned in the lesson plans mysteries in time it's just something that we do have um, for some hands-on activities but I also have found other activities that you can do if you don't have some kind of historical subscription box to go along with and as I said I'll be sharing a flip through of this curriculum very soon and um, it'll be going on Teachers Pay Teachers. And the other Explore book that I have just put onto a different shelf <laughs> was Shakespeare so that's in here too or I should say he's in here too. Okay, now I'm going to go through all the different additional books and resources that I have got to go along with our curriculum for Journey Through Time. Um, these are all optional, they're not essential as to, to actually do Journey Through Time. But I have got the Parallel History Collection for the Classical World, 
the early modern world, the ancient world, the 19th century world and the modern world. There's also the medieval times but that's in a different pile you'll see in a second. For our Shakespeare Explore unit we have got Macbeth and A Midsummer's Night's Dream for kids. These are really fun. Um, it's all in picture format and children have actually written their own version drawn pictures. So I think that's going to be really fun. I've got Osborne Sea Inside Houses long ago. So you've got a good range here. So we've got Villa, for Egypt, Rome, Chinese Courtyard, Viking Longhouse, English and Manor. So several that will be featuring in the Journey Through Time. This is for one of our Egyptian units. So this is a Inside Out Egyptian Mummy book. I thought this looked really fun. So every time you turn the page, you get deeper inside the mummy. <laughs> For the Shakespeare, we have What on Earth Warble Timeline of Shakespeare. It's got a little magnifier in here, and then there's the giant fold out warboard. I've also got the one for history. Again, you get the um, magnifier in there. It's just a fantastic resource. I love this so much. That's the parallel history for the medieval world. Okay, then we've got a medieval feast. See inside castles. For our Egyptian unit, we've got Egyptian things to make and do. The ancient Egypt picture book. This is fantastic. Um, amazing illustrations and real life photos and pictures. We've got Miss Frizzle's Adventures Medieval Castle. The Favourite Medieval Tales. See Inside Ancient China. See Inside the Ancient World. Uh, make this Viking settlement, so that's one of the Osborne cutout models. So we get to make that, so it's going to be lots of fun. And make this Roman villa, it's the same principle. And make this Roman amphitheater. We've got two truths and a lie. So histories and mysteries. So it's lots of critical thinking for this one. See inside ancient Greece. The first encyclopedia of history. The great smelly slobbery small tooth dog. That's actually um, a book tale from here. <laughs> Funny. Um, the big history timeline sticker book. Um, so I do actually have a timeline book for her, which I might use, but I, we also might just use this. We did do this pre like several years ago, um, but obviously now she's older, she'll appreciate it more. Um, so we've got that and all the stickers are at the back. So if she wants to use the timeline book, then we can take the stickers off, or if she wants to do the timeline on here again, then she can put them on there. Um, this is the British History Timeline sticker book. Again, we did this several years ago, but she'll appreciate it more now. And this goes through all the different periods too. Um, houses Through Time. This is a sticker book. So we've got lots of different... There's a wartime house. Victorian house, Georgian house, um, the Who Was History of the World, You Wouldn't Want to Be Mary Queen of Scots, Toby and the Great Fire of London, the Anglo-Saxons and Vikings, it's one of our units, this is also from one of our units, this is for the Victorians, so this is primary history, um, it's got lots of sources in here um, and different uh, illustrations and pictures of life in Victorian times and some comprehension activities. You wouldn't want to be in the Great Fire of London. Will's words, how William Shakespeare changed the way you talk. William Shakespeare on the globe. I've had this for several years. This is the Shakespeare Stories Collection. Um, she can read some of these too for herself. Um, so we've got everything in here pretty much. 
we can do some of the read aloud and then some she can read herself. I think she'll actually like acting them out too because we've been reading plays just lately and she's been really enjoying doing the different parts. So I think that'll be a fun way to do, use these. Several sticker books. So we've got the History of the World in 100 stickers. These are great for just for learning because obviously they've got lots of information on the page as well as stickers. But also if you're doing a read aloud that's quite heavy or you know time consuming then they can do some stickers at the same time. Um, the Ancient Roman sticker book, that was obviously the World Wars one, and Romans. Ladybird History, this is the British history version. Ladybird History First World War. DK Find Out World War II. Victorian House Picture Book for the Victorian unit. And the Romans sticker book. Great Women Who Made History. And then the Great Women Who Changed the World with the activity book. So when we're doing the wars, I've got these uh, replicas. Um, so this one is the home front. And we've got all these different things in here. So ration book, cookery book. Um, disease leaflet, war inf emergency information, some propaganda images and then this one is the children's war one and again we've got public information, some posters, newspaper, some food glorious food recipes so those, those will be really interesting to go through and the Osborne history collection so we've got several in here that we'll be studying this year the Greeks, Egyptians, Iron Age, Stone Age, Celts, Romans, Vikings, castles, digging up the past. Look inside mummies and pyramids. Uh, the DK find out ancient Egypt. The DK find out ancient Rome. It's disgusting and we ate it. <laughs> True food facts from around the world. Uh, Miss Frizzle's adventure in ancient Egypt. We're big Magic School Bus fans. The first book, dog, and they said the first book then, <laughs> the first dog, um, Little Grunt and the Big Egg, a prehistoric fairy tale, uh, DK Find Out Stone Age, and the Osborne Prehistoric World. I don't think you can get this anymore. I couldn't see it, but we've had this for, for many years now. Um, but hopefully, if you want it, you can find it somewhere because it's fantastic. So we got a Child Through Time, a, the book of children's history. Again, this is another one of the spines. Um, for the journey through time, as is a street through time. So we go through different, different, lots of different periods of history in this one. And then this is for fun, the maze quest history, travel through time. us for some read alouds and some books that she'll be reading this is not going to be all of them what i plan to do is um every time we switch to a different unit i'll show you everything that i've got for that particular unit at the time um so don't forget to subscribe if you're new and if you're already here then you'll see those you know once we start school in fourth grade okay so some reading books for her so we've got who was queen victoria the black death these are fantastic i love these because they remind me of the who was books but they're in color still um and she really enjoys them. Winnie's Great War. Um, that's actually not for her to read. That's one of our read lads. Um, I was there. Step back into the trenches of the First World War. This is for her to read. I was there. Step back into Victorian England. Winston Churchill. Again, um, I, the, I looked at the Who Was version, but I much prefer this one. And I know she will too because there's lots of photos and... Um, colour pictures and things and it's still they're still lengthy um, lengthy chapters Adolf Hitler Animals at War I actually got this last year but I decided to hold on to it when I knew I was going to do Journey Through Time um, because I thought it'd actually be perfect for us to do this year The Gunpowder Plot and she also has the Horrible Histories box of books so it's got all of the different periods so Stone Age, Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, Celts, Saxons, Vikings, Normans, Aztecs, Incas, Middle Ages, Tudors, Stuarts, Georgians, Victorians, Villainous Victorians, Balmy British Empire, Frightful First World War, Woeful Second World War, 
and blitz brits blitz brits <laughs> yeah I thought I said that wrong but I didn't um so basically if you've not seen these before and this one is the blitz brits one so that's what they're like inside for those that were asking um so we'll do some as read aloud and then some for her to read. She, I'll just let her pick which one she wants to read herself and then I'll read uh, her read aloud too for others. Okay, and then a couple of our, our read alouds for history. We've got Winnie's Great War, um, The Ice Monster, The Victory Dogs, so as the bombs fall, two puppies will make history, and The Railway Children. I, I do have several other read alouds for history, um, but what I'll do is, as I said, I'll post a video um, every time we switch to a new unit next year, or well, next school year, and show you all the different books and resources for that particular unit. Okay, for science, we are doing Dining on Science. These are my, my lesson plans that go along with the Magic School Bus. Episode Season 1 through 4. I have done a flip through of this before, and I'll leave the link below for that so you can check it out if you'd like to. It is available to purchase on Teachers Pay Teachers. So basically, it's set out in a starter, main course, dessert, and buffet. So the starter is always the Magic School Bus episode and additional books that go along with it. The main course is YouTube videos that support the topic and an activity. The dessert is another activity, usually a fun one. And then the buffet is cross curricular, so with different um, skills that can support the topic so some language arts in there some stem some additional science so there are lesson plans for biology physics chemistry earth astronomy and physics so you've got a ton of different um, activities that go along with it and all the activities that you can download from teachers pay teachers are actually free ones and I have linked them all so they're all hyperlinks so if you if you purchase it they're all hyperlinked you click on the link and it'll take you to the specific um, experiment or activity whatever it is and then you can download them it also comes with student pages so we've got experiment pages animal fact file pages stem pages and a bunch of other different templates as well but i'll leave the link below because um i'm i'm conscious this video is super long so i'll leave the link below you can touch check it out everything that's included and i give you a, a full flip through of it um, and these are some of the resources that are from Teachers Pay Teachers that you can download to go along with it. Okay, some of the books as part of The Spine are Nature Anatomy by Julie Roth, DK Encyclopedia of Animals, The Osborne Science Encyclopedia, and I link all the pages in the starter um, for all the books that are part of the core. Uh, the Knowledge Encyclopedia for DK of Animals. I love this book so much, it's one of my favourites. The Knowledge Encyclopedia for Human Body. And the Knowledge Encyclopedia for Science. So those are all the spine books. Those are all the spine books. And then I do list several books for each topic that you can include. And what I'm going to do is do a book haul soon showing you all the ones that I've picked from Dining on Science. Because obviously there are tons and you can just decide on which ones you want. Um, so don't forget to check out that video um, coming soon in the next couple of months. But of course I can show you some other books I do have um, to go along with it. So we've got the Magic School Bus book, so we've got Blows Its Top, Wet All Over, Our Solar System, The Giant Germ, Inside the Earth, Makes a Rainbow, um, this one is Inside the Human Body with the Disc, um, Explores the Senses, Plants Seeds, Polar Animals, uh, this one's On the Ocean Floor, uh, Gets a Bright Idea, Gets Cold Feet, The Human Body, Wild Weather, Insects, Flies from the Nest, The School, Magic School Bus and the Electric Field Trip, Out of This World, Shows and Tells. And then I got her selection of the chapter books to read herself. So we got Twist of Trouble, um, this one is Monster Power, uh, The Amazing Magnetism, Shark Escape and zap this is not magic school bus but it's for the energy um element we've got scene side energy all about physics and dog science unleashed i think i'm really excited about this one i uh, can't wait to show it to her fun activities to do with your canine companion um we have two dogs so i know that she's gonna really enjoy doing these different activities with her pets uh, i wish they had a cat one too because we do have a cat one but i've not seen it yet um, so it's going to be lots of fun. And then finally for science, we got skill shop and science. I love dipping into these for different topics. That's how we use it. 
and science lessons and investigations and again I'll dip into different topics and pull out one of the investigations um, to go along with when we want to. These are not essential at all to do dining science, I just really like them and we've had them pretty much every year from, well not this one because this is new, I think this is the second year this has been out, but we've had skill sharpeners I think from first or second grade onwards because we love them so much, but they're not essential at all for dining science, they're not even scheduled in there, it's just something that I, I like to add because I really do like them. I'll, as I said, I will show you additional books um, in another haul that I've got to go along with Dining on Science. And additional books for my daughter to read. We've got The Horrible Science, 20 Brilliant Books in One Bulging Box. She can't wait to get open this thing. I'm um, trying to keep saying, you know, we have to wait till fourth grade, but she's so excited to read it. So we've got really fun titles, Chemical Chaos, uh, disgust, disgusting, I can't talk, disgusting digestion, killer energy, <laughs> um, shocking electricity, vicious bed, ugly bugs, um, angry animals, there's lots of fun ones in here. Okay, so for geography, we are doing skill sharpness geography, grade four, for our, I guess you could say, curriculum day, and we're also doing movement, this is book four, and in movement we have... Planet Earth, water, weather, settlements, work and travel environment, places, which is coasts, rivers, weather patterns, towns, foods and shops, caring for towns, Northern Ireland, Germany, North America and Asia. And in this one we have um, the world in spatial terms, places and regions, physical systems, human systems. Um, environment and society and the uses of geography so that's I guess you could say our curriculum but we also do um, a unit study style approach to geography and this year we are doing um, continent study so we are doing Africa and Europe if we get to Antarctica as well that'd be great but the ones I'm planning for currently are Africa and Europe so we're doing it notebook style but we do have draw Africa um, so notebooking style so we do have draw Africa this is um, something that's new this year. I'm really looking forward to doing this every time you get to draw a new part of the map. Um, so I think this will be a great way for her to learn all the different cities and towns and everything else. One of our core uh, spines is Amazing World Atlas from Lonely Planet Kids. I really like this one because, um, let me just find a place to show you. So this is great, it's got lots of different maps at the front, different types of maps. Um, and then say for example we start with North America, it gives you some quick stats over here, there's a map. But then it goes into the history, the people and the culture, the environment and the wildlife. And I really like that, and then it goes into um, modern history, talking about geology. It just looks fantastic, I'm really really excited about this one. So this is one of our spines. Another of our spines is what's where on earth the animal atlas. I'm super excited about this one, it's gorgeous. See inside great cities. So we've got several in here. And the Osborne Geography Encyclopedia. And I've just got a bunch of other books that we'll be using to go along with it. So we've got the Illustrator Stories from Around the World, the Osborne Sticker Picture Atlas of the World. Passport to the World. We've had this book for years. Um, it's fantastic. Sure, it goes through every country, facts about the uh, language, what they eat, money, and everything else. The Osborne World of Animals. And if you watched my pre K haul, no, my pre K haul, I think it was, or my preschool haul, I think it was either pre K four haul, I think it was, this was in there. So this has stood the test of time and we're still using it now. So when I said in that video we'll be using this book for years to come, we really are. <laughs> I've got The Elementary Geography by Charlotte Mason, Material World, Hungry Planet, It's Time to Celebrate, Celebrations Around the World, The Geography Book, Activities for Exploring, Mapping and Enjoying Your World. Global Art, Activities, Projects and Inventions from Around the World. The Lonely Planet Kids Travel Book, A Journey Through Every Country in the World. Again, this is another fantastic one. I actually prefer the other one if I was to compare them both. So if you can only get one, I'd say get the other one. But I really do the Atlas one that I showed you, but the first one. I really do like this one too. Children Just Like Me. 
Maze Quest, Geography, Travel the Globe, our Maps book. Again, we've had this for several years. I still like this one. Uh, Osborne Maps Activity Book. And What's Where in the World, Planet Earth, as you've never seen it before. Again, it's another fantastic one. So I was going to make my own uh, notebook journal style for her to go through. We pre-filled questions and everything else, but I decided actually I'm just going to do a blank notebook. Of what we did this year, and it was fantastic. Always amazes me to see what she comes up with and that she finds really interesting and fascinating. So I'm actually going to do it that way. So we'll have an A4 exercise book and we'll just notebook our way. We'll draw things, we'll paint, we'll um, make notes of interesting facts and everything else, draw the flags. Um, so that's what we're going to do for geography this year. We'll also be incorporating lots of different picture books from around the, the continents and countries we're visiting and then also playing this game, Wonders of the World. So we get to learn about the greatest wonders on the planet. For geography, we'll be reading The Greetings from Somewhere, The Mystery of the Lion's Tail. This is specifically for Africa. Um, she, she can read these, obviously. Um, and then I'll get some more for the different continents that we're visiting. So one for Europe, hopefully. I'm sure they have one. I think I did definitely see one. And then A World Full of Animal Stories, 50 Folk Tales and Legends. For art this year, we are using Living Art Lessons by Masterbooks. This is the... Um, guide and then the artist journal that goes along with it uh, so this covers beautiful pictures as well this covers line shapes color value texture form and space and we'll be continuing using hardcore art this is the fourth grade level we used this this year and we really enjoyed it and they have lots of different projects and um, they also have some art history in here as well information about the artists and um, little activities things that you can do and I've just got a bunch of fun little things we can do along with it. So we've got the Impressionist sticker book, the art sticker book. We've got Katie and the Impressionists, Katie and the Sunflowers, Katie and the Water Lily Pond. This is Leonardo da Vinci Scholastic, famous artist sticker book tells you all about the artists and the stickers are all at the back with their works. The Osborne Art Treasury, so pictures, paintings and projects. This is gorgeous, this book. Um, so it gives you um, the artist and then an example for you to make of their own, of their work, but obviously your own version. Uh, the Osborne Art Ideas for Drawing Cartoons, we love these ones. The Art, a Children's Encyclopedia book from DK. This is another classic one for Van Gogh. This is The Great Artists Picasso. The Great Artists Van Gogh. We always bring these out every year and go through them again. Um, because obviously as kids get older they understand things more and um, can get more out of them. The Great Artists Monet. The Great Artists Da Vinci. And the great artist Michelangelo and Rembrandt. We also have the famous painting cards, and we will put these in our morning basket as well. And then an art game, which is Art Snap. It has the paintings and the name of the artist and the name of the painting. Our fun, some fun supplies. I actually got these for, that I was going to give her for Christmas, but I then decided to get her something else I'd seen and thought actually these will be great for school. So I got her a, a sketchbook, um, some markers, the jewel tip, the like inside, some watercolour brushes, um, some watercolour brush pens, um, some metallic marker pens, and then this pack of artist pencils. So it's got um, watercolours in there, uh, sketching pencils, colour pencils, metallic colour pencils, charcoal pencils. It's a good, good collection in there. Computers this year we are doing Keyboarding Without Tears from Handwriting Without Tears. I'll leave a link to that below. We've used that in the past and really liked it. We didn't use it last year. We tried something different but we are going back to it because we really do like that method. Um, she has is also doing um, her usual coding. So we've got Computer Coding for Kids. This is a DK. 
we have got coding for beginners using python and raspberry pi and then here's her little raspberry pi that goes with that we also have the computing dictionary look inside how computers work from osborne This is a computer science book. Again, this is one that you can use for several years, like the maths one. Here's our content. So we've got everything in here. Programming languages, website and app construction, which is one of the things we're going to talk about in a second. Digital issue, issues, data, programming, so much in here. The key project this year is build your own website for beginners. So we're going to build a website. Uh, this is the second part of my... Um, curriculum that I made for our IT. It's based on the Animals of Farthing Wood, as I mentioned earlier, series, so they have to leave the home due to construction, and it was everything along the, along the way, so Al would send her letters, you know, saying the animals needed this, um, this was happening, and life cycles and everything else. And we did IT projects around that, so we did presentations in PowerPoint and we used Excel to graph things, so such as predator and prey, um, we made life cycle posters, we made posters about conservation. Um, this year I want to do a website for beginners um, project. So we'll, ideally I'd like her to do a reserve um, website, you know, all about animals uh, protection and conservation. But if she wants to do, go a different way, that's absolutely fine. Um, but this is all about setting up your website. These little books that we dip into. So this one is Learn to Program. And this one is Algorithms and Bugs. This is Kids Get Coding Our Digital World, and then this one is Staying Safe Online. And they also cover this in Keyboarding Without Tears as well. Baking, we are using the Yum Schooling cookbook from Thinking Tree, so there are 15 recipes in here. There's lots of activities to go along with them as well, step-by-step -step instructions. I also got Kids Can Cook, Fun and Yummy Recipes for Budding Chefs, and this looks fantastic. There's lots of different... Um, as you can see, breakfast, snacks and breads, main meals and sauces, and then some sweet treats. And again, they're all step-by-step -step instructions. And I also got her the You Can Cook Tasty Food. Um, so this has got lots of recipes in. And then there's usually an activity that goes along with it. So for example, this one's fudge. Find out how cashew nuts grow and draw pictures here to show the process. You will be surprised. Um, so this one is all about dates. How do dates grow? So there's lots of fun little activities that go along with the recipes as well as the step-by-step -step instructions. I also have the Osborne cookbook for around the world, which you can we can use along with our geography too. Now that we are using Harcourt again, we used it this year and it was fantastic. Um, just what we needed. So it's got um, you know, all the different. It also covers character as well, not just health and mental well-being and everything else. So in this one, we've got personal health, food and your health, fitness, staying safe. Guarding against disease, medicines, drugs and your health, harmful effects of tobacco and alcohol, your needs and feelings, families together and living in a healthful community. Help, healthful community. Is that? Or helpful? Healthful. <laughs> uh, and they have lots of activities um, to go along with them, with each uh, chapter. For music this year, for music this year we're using the Thinking Tree Piano Lessons for Kids. Um, this is a instruction book, it's self-paced but there's video links that go along with it as well. And we're also using Hoffman Academy Online too. We've also got the story of the orchestra. You can listen to all the different pieces of music and the different instruments that play them. Uh, list the flap questions and answers about music. The School of Music, this is Wide Eyed, so listen and learn with bonus music samples online as well. Okay, and then my first orchestra book, we've had this one for years but it's still fun, and this one comes with a disc too. And again, you've got all the different instruments. Um, I'm also going to get, I haven't got it yet, because I was waiting to see if they had a sale, um, Squilt. I'm getting the uh, composers, meet the composers, and um, the instruments one, the orchestra instruments too. Okay, so for one of our electives this year, I'm doing a career one. And she has been saying for quite a long time now that she'd like to perhaps go into veterinary field. Um, so I wanted to do a little veterinary unit for her. Um, so what we've got is I want to be a veterinarian. This is a heart court book. 
I also got her the veterinary anatomy coloring book so you learn all about the different anatomy of the different animals um, you can label them as well this is for a read aloud. This is Tales from a Young Vet. Mad cows, crazy kittens, and all creatures big and small. I think that would be a fun one. And then this one is an activity one. So it's got seven dog and cat stories in to test your veterinary knowledge. Be the vet. <laughs> There's several in this series. So if we like it, we'll definitely get some more of that one. We also have Vet Academy. And I got her the Cat Lovers Learning Journal. Um, this is from a new company that's actually an Australian company. I've never heard them before. I found them on someone else's video. And they looked fantastic. So they have tons of different ones. But what I particularly like um, about this style is that they actually have anatomy in here as well. Um, so this one is science of cats, so purring, fascinating facts, media study. And then, for example, here we've got the anatomy of the ear. Um, so this is fantastic. History of the breed. Um, so many different things in here. Uh, copy a section of a news report about a cat. So to help with those sorts of... Um, assignments so this is the breeds that are included i got her 30 true tales of courageous cats so fearless felines so i thought that would be really useful for her so she can read this and enjoy it as well but obviously she can it will help with her cat journal this looks such a fun book i can't wait to see what she thinks about this one and then I also got her the Teach Yourself to Draw a Puppy's Life. Um, so this is uh, art, research, science and creative writing all in one. So you get to research the breed, um, draw them, uh, find out all about them, their enemies, predators and all that kind of stuff. Um, habitat. So it's not, it's not just art. That's why I put it in this section in our elective. French this year, I've gone with a story-based curriculum. So this is for teaching French... Um, in key stage two um so this has got all the different books here and then it's got some a teacher's guide as well uh, so here we go a bit of focus so i'm really excited to see how this goes i also have the french one that we've been doing this year which you can continue with because it goes up to up 10 up to age 10 so we'll do them both combined and then i'll as i was before supplementing you know youtube videos here and there for different reinforcement so that's what we're doing for french so it's a storybook scheme to study for nature study this year we're using julia rothman's nature anatomy and we are using the companion journal um this is just the front cover because i've run out of paper <laughs> i was about to print and i run out of paper um but i'm really looking forward to going through these with her this year I think I actually might print myself one off too and we can do it together. And then I've got some extra things to go along with. So nature study and outdoor science journal. We're continuing on with this one. We did start it this year and we're continuing on with it because we haven't finished. You can have an outdoor adventure. This looks really fun. So there's lots of different um, activities that you can do. So tracking, the hotel, bugs, um, how to start a fire safely. Um, so many different fun things in here. I thought that would be a great one. I got some of these little Osborne minis, so we've got bugs and birds to spot and flowers to spot. Uh, we also have trees, but I've given it, I gave her that one in her Easter basket. Um, so we can go through these this year for Nature Study. Uh, you can grow your own food. We are loving growing our food at the moment. We've, we've got potatoes and several different vegetables on the go. They're doing really well, so I thought this one would be great. And they have lots of activities as well with it as well. Um, not just, you know, plant this. So add a photo, all the different equipment and resources you need, grow a pizza garden, make seed tapes, grow a crest head, welly planters, so many fun things. Um, we use this a lot, but it's always a great one to have. This is the RSPB's Children's Guide to Nature Watching. So if we can't, or we're not sure about something, we can have a look in here. A wildlife in your garden. This is a great resource. British Wildlife. This is gorgeous, this one too. Great for notebooking, nature notebooking. The Big Book of Bugs. I'm sure you've all seen this one before. This is her nature clipboard. Get outdoors with wildlife activities and spotters guide. They're all on the side here. i just grab the tree one so you can see what it's like. And then I got the birds, National Geographic and insects National Geographic okay so I'm going to show you what, what we're putting in our morning basket so we're not doing a monthly morning basket we're doing a this is our books and we're just going to finish them and when they're done we'll get the next one in the series um, scenario if we like that one or that'll be 
the book will be done and then that will come out of the basket uh, because I find that that makes it more um, manageable rather than changing the theme every month and things like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I just think I much prefer it this way. Um, so we've got our island story. So this is a history text um, to go along with Journey Through Time. The Burgess Bird Book. Um, once we finish this one, we'll go on to the next one in the series. So the animals one it does have some illustrations in, if I can find one. Um, there we go, on the orange colour in this particular one. The Storybook of Science. Again, this will um, go in the morning basket and then go along with uh, Dining on Science. What would she do? Real life stories of 25 rebel women who changed the world. We love this one. Stand up, stand out, 25 rebel heroes who stood up for their beliefs and how they could inspire you. The Lost Words. So this is a gorgeous book. Um, lots of poems in here. Gorgeous illustrations. And basically this book was written because they took out several words from the dictionary um, because they didn't think they needed to be in there anymore. Um, so the author didn't want people to forget the words, so he made this amazing book. The title of this one makes me laugh. How to be a person. 65 hugely useful, super important skills to learn before you're grown up. So it's actually useful stuff. So calculator tip, do a load of laundry, write thank you notes, so many different things in here, roast a chicken, chop an onion, plunge a toilet, empty the dishwasher, fill out a form, address an envelope, be a gracious host, um, be a welcoming guest, take care of pets, help someone including yourself fall asleep, be with a little baby or a kid, bring a little sunshine to older folks, so there's so many things, cheer up sick people, so I thought that'd be great for the morning basket, lots of fun. This is our big poem book for the year. So this is Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright, an animal poem for every day of the year. And this just looks absolutely stunning. Super excited about this one. Absolutely everything, a history of earth, dinosaurs, rulers, robots, and other things too numerous to mention. <laughs> um, so you've got a bit of everything in here and it's in a storybook style. So perfect for morning basket. Helping our planet. Uh, the 100 things to know about oceans. Basically with these ones I'm just going to go through the series because we've got most of them. So once we finish the oceans one then we'll just move on to the next one. But I thought we'd start with oceans. Uh, philosophy for kids. Uh, my pile is collapsing. <laughs> 40 fun questions that help you wonder about everything. This looks like a really good one. I'll definitely let you know uh, what we think of it once we start. And then some fun little things to put in there, card games to play, so lots of different um, instructions for different card games. Memory games, I thought this would be great for Morning Basket while I'm reading. 99 math puzzles, a drawing a day tear off pad, and then some colouring books, so we've got beautiful animals and birds. Some fun stuff, we've got Magic School Bus adjoining to the human body, this will go really nicely with Dining on Science. Magic School Bus, the world of germs. Magic School Bus, the secrets of space. Magic School Bus, the engineering bus. So we've got lots of different, um, oops, lots of different activities in this one. So make an electrical circuit, make a soda can submarine, watch a solar panel at work, make pasta dance, learn about simple machines. Lots of fun things. In here is a little electrical circuit game. Oh, not a game, but electrical circuit activities. You put the bulbs in, the batteries, and all the thing else to make a circuit. The yes no game. I remember playing this when I was a kid. Not the actual game because they didn't have it then, but just the game on the plane. So you can try and get the other person to say yes or no. Those types of things. So I thought when I saw this, I have to get it. It just reminds me so much of my childhood. Now they actually have a game version of it. Um, so you get the little bell and the little cards. So I thought that'd be really fun. Roll Doll Mad Libs, these are specifically uh, for Roll Doll and all his different books. So you've got all the different stories in here, the twit and everything else. This looks so fun. This is The Great Grammar Book by Kate Petty. And it's all flip, uh, flip flap, um, spin this, pull that tab, 
they look absolutely gorgeous so this is the verbs one it's a spinny wheel one if i can do it there we go <laughs> um well lift the flap things pull tabs over here uh adjectives pronouns there's a little mirror here adverbs uh, conjunctions plurals so one puppy puppies <laughs> I just love it so much. I thought it was such a fun way to practice grammar. The never get bored draw and paint. Um, so we could pop this in the morning basket or she can obviously just do it at any point. So I thought that was a fun one. We love these funny fillings. This is my pet adventure. And these are like Mad Libs but in colour. I always get her a blank comic book every year. So this one is the 150 pages one. A little bit disappointed though because the um, panels are a lot smaller in terms of the number of them. Um, so this will probably get filled up really fast, but it does have the speech bubbles, which her other one didn't have. So that's that one. 100 bugs to fold and fly. We love these ones. Um, they are quite tricky though, so you do have to help. And the origami animal ones. We've already done a few of these, but we still really like them. The Osborne Design Activity Book. I thought this will be a really fun one. It's all kinds of different types of design in here. We love these brain boxes, so I've picked out the art, the British history, and the nature one. Again, this year I decided to get the Horrible Histories board game, so I thought this will go great with a Journey Through Time. Got her the Ocean Anatomy puzzle, I thought that'd be a really fun one from Julia Rothman. And then she loves animation, and we did it as an elective last year. While we're not doing it as an elective this year, she still really enjoys it. Um, so she can do, obviously, out of school <laughs> as well. But I thought I'd show you in case you are wanting to do an animation elective this year. Um, I got her this animation kit, so it's the stop motion camera. Uh, we've just been doing it with regular cameras, so I'm really excited to see what she makes now, now that she's got a proper one um, to go along with. And um, we will do elements of animation in school, so that's why I'm putting it into the school hall, because um, for language arts and things, uh, one of the required uh, resources for Beowulf grammar and Beowulf language arts are little puppets so I thought we can really use this as well as part of that but it's not just for school she can obviously use it out of school too to make her own little animations and I have got several books that I really like to go along with this if you want to um if you want to know more about that definitely leave me a comment and I'll let you know which books I recommend for animation however um they, I think some of them are in my previous last year's third grade haul too and that's everything. Thank you so much. If you have got to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. Um, I hope it gave you some ideas if you're still on the hunt. And um, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you're not. I really appreciate it. And I'll be back with more videos. So I've got several hauls coming up. Um, and new content. That's my cat running wild. <laughs> new content in the new school year. So thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you soon.